Welcome uh, all of you here from the Iranian American community in Arizona, uh, their neighbors and friends in the community, the various legislators who are here today, uh, and those who are interested in the issue of human rights. You know, we could not have picked a more fitting day for this conference uh, had we planned it uh, to coincide. Those of us, uh, I served at one time as the U.S. expert on the United Nations Human Rights Subcommission from 1992 to 1996. And those of us who follow uh, these issues of human rights at the United Nations looked yesterday at what happened uh, in the Commission on the Status of Women when the newest members were appointed to that commission and the government of the mullahs in Iran was appointed to this commission that is supposed to deal with the status of women. I, I don't think there could be a bigger irony after seeing Madame Rajavi, who represents democracy, hope, freedom, a pluralistic government, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, and equality uh, for all people in Iran, and see that representation and then know that the most misogynistic, anti-human rights regime in the region has now been appointed to this commission. And this is something that has always concerned me as a woman and as someone who is interested in human rights because for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, what goes on in Iran, and I'm sure there are not many of you here who don't know, but the fact is, women in Iran lack the most basic human rights. They uh, do not have the same right to divorce as men do. Uh, when women are divorced in Iran, they lack uh, the right of custody of their own children. They can be arrested, beaten, and basically disappeared for not following the rules on veiling that the vice police uh, that roam the streets and the cities of Iran. Uh, there are incredible uh, attacks on women in Iran every day. Uh, most recently, just this last year, there were attacks of acid throwing, not just on adult women, but on young girls uh, who were disfigured because the uh, mullah's regime believed that they were somehow acting in a way that they, they did not approve of. They may not travel, they may not study what they choose, and they may not work at their uh, profession. So this is the regime that the United Nations has decided to place on the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. Now, we're gonna hear today from a variety of speakers and we're going to focus on some very important issues to us as Americans, including the role of Iran in the world and their uh, seeking nuclear weapons and what a threat this poses, uh, not just to the Iranian people or to the people in the region, but to all the peoples in the world. And we're gonna hear more about that. But I think it's also important that we hear about what it is uh, as our responsibility as Americans uh, to a different group uh, of Iranian dissidents. You heard reference in the opening to those who are, uh, those who were attacked at Camp Ashraf, and we see the victims' pictures here, uh, the dozens of people who were killed in that attack. But this is not one attack, this is a series of attacks that has uh, taken place in Iraq. And we're also going to hear later in the program from someone who knows the situation on the ground uh, in Iraq for those 3,000 Iranian dissidents who are imprisoned literally in a concentration camp in what is ironically called Camp Liberty. And I say this has to be a concern of ours because the United States government, when we went into Iraq, got the residents of then Camp Ashraf to lay down their weapons and to turn over their weapons to the U.S. government in return for promise of protection. Well, that promise, as soon as the United States left, has been violated over and over again. And so I think it is important for us as Americans to recognize that we have a responsibility here as well. 
and we have a responsibility to do what we can, and we'll talk more about that later, uh, to try to give assistance to those 3,000 persons who are still entrapped in Iraq, being persecuted by the Maliki government, that really is acting simply as a puppet of the Iranian regime. It is um, a, a travesty and, I think, a stain on the reputation of the United States. You know, we've heard a lot today. We've heard about the nuclear threat that Iran poses. We've heard about the regime and what it does to its people. We've heard about the broken promises that have been made by our government, by the United Nations. And as we listen to this, many of us, I'm sure, are sitting there wondering, well, what can I do about that? You know, I'm not going to be sent to the negotiations. I wish Rudy Giuliani was sent to the negotiations uh, with the Iranians. You know, we're, we're not going to don arms and become guerrilla warriors and, and invade uh, Iran and try to overthrow the regime. But what we can do is to give support to the people who are the resistance, the main resistance to that regime. And that includes the people who are here in this room who have been affiliated with the MEK, and the National Council of Resistance in Iran and Miriam Rajavi. They are the hope. But there's, something, but there's something more that we can do, and I think we do not want to forget not just the people who've lost their lives, and it's not just the people who's pictured here. We're talking about hundreds of people who have lost their lives in Ashraf and in Camp Liberty. And as General Casey can attest, these are people whose lives our American government pledged to protect. Well, 3,000 of them are still in Camp Liberty, and they are living in absolutely abysmal conditions. They do not have sanitation. They don't have easy access to water. They don't have proper living conditions. They don't have medical attention. And they do not have protection from the rocket attacks and from the uh, assaults that have been launched against Camp Liberty. We need to do something about that. You know, we heard from Mr. Arahimian just a few moments ago. He was able to escape and he was able to come to the United States. Why? Because the United States has always been the beacon for freedom, for freedom loving and aspiring people throughout the world. We need to be that now. There are, th there are 3,000 people in Camp Liberty. These are well-educated professionals. These are people who would be wonderful uh, contributors to our communities. How is it that the country of Albania has taken more of these refugees than the United States of America? How is that? How can we let that be? And so if you want to know what you can do, what you can do is become a voice to pressure our government our elected officials, members of Congress, and the White House to do what we have always done as a country, and that is to take in refugees. The Iranian community is here to help those people be able to resettle. My husband, during the first uh, Bush administration, was the director of refugee resettlement. We took in Soviet Jews, we took in Ethiopians, we took in Somalis, we took in people from all over the world who were fighting repression. It is time that we give refuge to those people in Camp Liberty who have our word that we would protect them. And so if you want to know what you can do, you can go home, you can write letters to the editor, you can write your members of Congress, you can say, give these people the liberty that that camp name bears. Thank you very much for coming today.